What's up, boob tube? Uh, Josh here. Haven't posted a video in a rotary related video in quite some time, but uh, figured I would do just a quick little overview with some actual uh, hard uh, not hard evidence, but like uh, actual examples of what you know porting is for a rotary. Um, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll go over all the different types of porting that you could possibly have or do. Uh, with some variations here and there. Sorry for the heater running, it's quite cold outside, it's like 30 something degrees. But uh, anyways, so this right here is a six port FC motor. So uh, this would be an NA motor. Um, if you were to have the turbo motor, it would be something more like that. But this is just a stock port, stock uh, side housing for an FC. And if you can see, so there's this plunger that goes in here and it's uh, actuated based on throttle and so on and so forth and it opens and closes depending on RPM. Um, I don't know the details on it so I can't describe if it opens at low RPM and closes at high RPM or vice versa. But anyways, uh, that's the distinguishing sign that I have an NA uh, side side housing. Um, also, you know, that's what they kind of look like down down in there. And there's a plunger that goes in here. And I actually, I think I've got one. Actually, here they are. So that's what they look like. That's what the uh, plungers look like. It goes in, and it spins, opens, and closes, and allows air in. So. This is your, God, my shop's a wreck. This is your basic stock port. Um, people will extend these and do all sorts of stuff, which we'll go over now. So here's one that I've ported myself. I still need to clean up, but it's a, uh, this is a street port, six port. This is actually a uh, GSL SE side housing. And the way you can tell is the irons aren't grooved for the water for the coolant uh, coolant seals whereas the FC's are so I've ported these this is a just a, a stereotypical street port just enlarged brought the bottom down brought you don't really bring this edge out you don't really bring this edge out you bring this top edge up a little bit and you just round the corners and smooth everything out on the inside so that is your stereotypical street port. If it's a four port, it looks something like that. If it's a six port, it looks like that. There you have it. Bridge ports, on the other hand, is quite literally a bridge. So this one is whack job huge. This is a big bridge port. Um, so there's your actual port for a bridge, and you've got a little bridge that connects the two so that the height, the, that the, that the side housing rides on as it comes through here so that it doesn't fall into the port itself. Um, this one's had substantial grinding and polishing done on it. That one's, this is pretty big. I would almost consider this a, a monster street port with a bridge attached to it. And, uh, but yeah, so this is also a side housing to a GSL SE motor by the no coolant, um, coolant seals aren't on the side housing. Anyways, bridge port. People also embig in these, the intake runners. Um, you can see those have been polished and cleaned up quite well. And uh, so yeah, there's your basic bridge port. Um, let's see, I might, nah, I'm not even going to worry about it. So then there's also something called a semi-peripheral port which I don't have one of those, but they're, it's essentially the same thing as a peripheral port, minus the fact that it's significantly smaller. So on a semi, 
semi P port motor, you still retain some of the uh, some of the stock intake runners. So you might keep the center housing or the side housing runners and or block either or off. The semi port, you drill this out and you sleeve it so that it uh, doesn't so coolant doesn't pass into it, and you uh, essentially allow air in that way. So that's a semi P. Those are pretty fairly common. Um, all three of those, and then there's some there's some variations on you know your different ports. Like you have a you have just a normal street port. You have an extended port. You have a monster street port. You have a J port. You have a bridge port. The J port is like it actually cuts back into the coolant housing or the coolant line a little bit more, and it's it's ginormous. It's really stupid. It's like drag racing applications only, pretty much. And then you have the Mac Daddy, which is the one that everybody loves, that gives you all the braps, which is the peripheral port motor, which is this bad boy. So you literally drill a giant hole in the side, and you put a big old tube on it, and that's all air. These are race car only. Um, these won't run. These won't idle below 2,000, 2,500 RPMs just because it can't, it just won't do it. It can't keep the, keep the air flowing through it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so figured I would do a little, you know, informational video for anybody that doesn't really have any, any idea on the differences between them. Um, that's pretty much it for the most part. Uh, trying to think if there's really anything else that's distinguishing that you might need to need to know but other than that um believe that's it for this um i'm slowly working on slowly working on this motor i still haven't even finished the other side of putting the putty in if you've watched that video um slowly working on the gene berg i'm actually in the process of Oh, organizing everything and getting everything ready to possibly move, but that's neither here nor there. Haven't decided if that's going to happen yet or not. Um, Got to get my 3D printer fixed. Got a buddy that's going to work on it for me. Hopefully he can figure out the gremlins that I've been chasing down since I got it up and working. And yeah. Um, so that's that's the basic intake porting on rotaries and of course i gotta do the stupid outro of you know like comment subscribe and all that's all that youtube bullshit um and always remember guys happy brapping